it's a randomized controlled trial. Uh, we sent those monitors to Adelaide Hospital in Australia. We didn't tell them anything. We just said, the group of PNI has to be maintained with 50 and 70. And the other group, you will maintain it with normal hemodynamic conditions, okay? It's a spinal surgery, fentanyl, sevoflurane. We measure pain scores afterwards, in, uh, after the operation, and we show that the group of PNI had in the operation NRS scores of three, so no pain, against the group titrated with hemodynamics. Five, six, so pain. And due to that, the amount of fentanyl in the postoperative was bigger in the group of no ENI with hemodynamics, etc., with bigger side effects. That's normal. But the important thing was that when they look at the amount of fentanyl that was given intraoperatively, they saw that it was the same amount. So how is it possible that we get no pain against pain at this difference with the same amount of fentanyl that we gave totally? They look at how it was administered, and they show that they, in the ENI group, they were given the majority of the amount in the first 45 minutes. And they were given a smaller boluses. ENI was forcing them to use 25, 50 micrograms per bolus in order to maintain 50, 70, not to go over, not to go below. And the other group, and, and, and a lot at the beginning, you know? And then the rest was nearly nothing. Against the other group, in which they were giving 75, 100 micrograms every 30 minutes. Okay. And you can see that due to that, the amount of time spent with ENI high was higher in the ENI group than in the other group. The authors conclude that ENI was allowing them to detect the nociception stimulation, and that was uh, the cause that they were able to treat that and to avoid neuromodulation. What means neuromodulation? It means avoiding the inflammation response that was creating that acute postoperative pain. Okay. 